Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today in the jar we have got quotes by the wonderful Lester Levinson. I am rereading his book possibly for the third time. It is called Happiness is Free. I think that's the one I'm reading. <laughs> I've got two others in my Kindle e-reader but yeah I'm rereading the one that I keep going back to all the time it's so good so I've got some quotes from there as always feel free to choose from group one group two or group three and I'll see you in your reading hi there group number one if you chose group number one then you are in the right place before I shuffle from here let's take a couple of oracle cards I haven't worked with this deck for a while so we will see what comes and I have a new deck that I bought by Lumiere and she's a really good tarot reader that I sometimes watch on YouTube and I noticed that she uses the same company that I use to design my uh, my tarot deck that I'm going to shuffle from here she's designed a few decks and yeah I just wanted to see like how they turned out and you know what's the What's the process? What is it like to be a customer of one of these shops? It's a make, I think it's called Make Playing Cards shop. So I wanted the customer experience because if I, you know, publish this on there, which I, uh, likely I think, I think it's, I think that's the place where I want to launch these. Ooh, should we take them? Let's take them. Go on. They want to be here, so we'll take them both and we'll take one of these yeah so I mean if I'm going to make these uh, available that's going to be the shop that I use so I wanted the customer experience which is why I bought one from the Lumiere shop and yeah we'll just see how that goes I'll let you guys know when I'm going to make it available all right so let's see we've got that and we're going to take a couple from here and see what's going on let's take them all let's draw them all first Oh, all right, there we go. Well, that really wants to be there. So why don't we just take that? <laughs> Looks like the Knight of Cups there. Um, oh, we'll take one more, we'll take one more and then we'll see, we'll check them all out. So we've got a little bit of a theme there and one more. All right, hope we've got good light here. Yeah, we do, it's kind of afternoon here. We're running out of daylight. Okay, so we have the Knight of Cups has appeared, so you know, Maybe you're maybe something you want to give to someone or maybe you want to start something new here. Let's take a look what's going on here. Oh, to be fair. Right. I've never drawn this card before. Wow. Weighing scales. Yeah. It's kind of like a justice type thing. Oh, what's in the picture? That One of them looks like a fortune cookie. That looks like a fortune cookie, but what's that? Hmm, I don't know. There's an owl on her head. 38, master number 11. Okay, very interesting, to be fair. Right. I hope you're having a good week wherever you are, by the way. Oh, shadow. Hmm, interesting. It's kind of like... Well, mm. I don't know why, but this kind of reminds me of Capricorn. But anyway, and it does say shadow there. And Capricorn is the devil in tarot. So, you know, I've got a bit of a, is that like a goat ram type thing going on? Let's keep going. <laughs> right, what's in here? Keto in the first house, yeah. Has psychic powers, weak constitution, illness that baffles doctors. Strong sense of self, hardworking, self-motivated, and very, very independent. You probably had past lifetimes of being very independent as well. Okay. <laughs> How amazing. Well, that couldn't be more perfect, guys. That is pretty incredible. And I have quite the urge to cough. Hold on a moment. <coughs> <coughs> mm. Right. Okay. That is pretty extraordinary, guys, because I have shuffled 
this quite a bit and that I mean that that couldn't be more incredible this is the Rahu Ketu axis <laughs> this is it I mean if you got Rahu in the seventh you're gonna have Ketu in the first if you got Ketu in the first you're gonna have Rahu in the seventh so that is quite incredible okay so it says this person has affairs with or marries foreigner experiences the supernatural accomplishes past life obsession oh I like that definition pursues fame and or business yeah great well this is a terrific axis let's see what else is coming on coming through these cards all right let's see what's in here dreams beautiful you have that word obsession appearing as well which is perfect we have the knight of cups and here we have got the hanged man okay so this is kind of showing me that there's something you would like to do but for now you can't do anything about it and that's okay and I would say just just be where you are kind of thing and while you're in this position make the most of it because it will be for a time you're not going to be in this tricky position where you can't do anything forever you're not going to be in that state forever so this will move this will release so there's something it's and, and I think what it is that you want to do and if we took this very very literally this would be you know perhaps maybe there's someone that you like or you want to spend time with or you want to invite them somewhere or something like that yeah you'll be able to do that but it feels like not now is the thing that's coming through and maybe you compensate for that by like dreaming about the time when things will shift and you will be able to act on what it is that you want because of course Rahu in the seventh Rahu in the seventh when Rahu in the seventh really wants to be with someone or like someone or if it's that kind of thing then yeah they, they can be obsessed uh, about that and that's that's very natural so that's there this could also be a work thing maybe you are you see with Rahu in the seventh again it could be work it could be business okay so seventh house yes is marriage it's amazing we've got this to be fair we've got the weighing scales here we've got the seventh house here this is pretty incredible wow that is amazing so yeah we've got seventh house here so there's either some business venture or there's something you really want to do or there's maybe someone you want to be with or something along those lines maybe you like this person or you know whatever that is so there's this kind of thing perhaps you're dreaming about this you're dreaming about that next step or that next venture business venture or if it's being with someone that you like or something along those lines sure something you're dreaming about and you want you want to have happen we do have though the appearance of this shadow card and I'm not quite sure what that's all about now we could take that as being 10th house and this could be work perhaps this is something to do with your current work situation or the situation that you're in and it is to do with work it is to do with the 10th house of career there's some career thing that's preventing you from taking a next step in something let's see if we can shuffle and find out some more information about this shadow card that we've got there <coughs> all right that one wants to be here okay well let's see all right so again we've got the knight of wands mm, okay not obvious so i'm going to ask for another card here oh let's leave it <laughs> uh, let's see what else is going on nope we'll take this one. Oh, wow uh, three of cups ah hmm okay well this is kind of interesting 
if this is a, if this is a situation where you are wanting to pursue a person it's kind of like there might there's three people here and this is part of your shadow side that it's maybe you're in a committed situation with somebody else or you yeah it does kind of feel like this there might be somebody else and that's perfectly fine that is perfectly fine so that's with Rahu in the seventh house if it was a situation where you are wanting to meet someone let's let's shuffle the shadow if this is about a work dynamic because I think for some of you here this could be work related this could be all right seven of swords deception fine let's take another one Four of Pentacles holding on. Mm. And I get that this is self-deception. And there's something that you're holding on to. It's, it's a security thing. And perhaps the last time you tried to make a move or do something, maybe you got stung or... It didn't work or you know so that's if it's work let's park that over there let's ask a little bit more about the dream side of things let's just let's see if we draw a card about what is this dream and is this dream I want to look at night and night of cups and dreams together what's that what's that all about what is this person? What are you what are you after? What this one's sticking out, let's take it. Alright, nine of swords. Ooh. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit kind of um unsettled here. Let's have a look. Wow, healing. The star. Don't know if that's in focus or not. We've got the nine of swords and the star. Some energy needs clearing. There's some work yet to be done. And it's kind of like there's a wisdom in the delay. There's a wisdom in why you're being held back at this time. Healing, though, is very much here for you. Okay? You can heal this to new. You can heal this to new. You can heal this in such a way that it was never there in the first place. That's very, very, very possible. So I wouldn't be too worried, group number one. But it, it feels like you've got a bit of a time delay. I want to see what Lester has to say. Life in the world should consist of only two things. That which helps us grow or that which will help others grow. Yeah. That's quite ideal, isn't it? And we are always growing. We are always learning. We are always changing. We are always transforming. Even in stuck situations, even in situations where there's little room for manoeuvre, okay, which is kind of where you're at at the moment. And you're possibly just getting your enjoyment through dreams, Let's take a look at the next quote. We'll get another one as well. There is, yeah, there's, it's the Nine of Swords that I would want to spend time with and explore, but I'm, I'm a bit limited on time. I can see the, the thingy is uh, at 14 minutes. It's going to cut out soon. Let's get going here. Conformity is dependency, is having to do what others do, wanting their approval. 
An independent person is always an oddball, misunderstood by society. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. And perhaps this is a little bit of inspiration for when that time comes to go for what it is that you want because perhaps you're being held back. Perhaps you're being held back by other people's opinions. Look at that. We did have the Three of Cups here. Right? We did have this appear. So maybe this wasn't, as I was saying, this could be maybe some third party or something along those lines, but equally maybe this is the opinions of society. Maybe this is the opinions of family. Let's take one more quote. Okay. Rebellion is better than the inability to rebel. Best is acceptance with no wish to rebel. This is actually perfect for this hanged man that you've got here. Acceptance with no wish to rebel is, it feels like the ultimate solution for now, for now. Because when you accept things as they are, that is actually when they change. I remember one time someone had asked me, this camera is going to cut out by the way, but I'll just start the story and I'll start again if it cuts out. Someone asked me, oh, where do you see yourself in five years or something like that? And I was being a bit facetious when I said, what did I say? I said something like, um, oh, I see myself standing right here. You know, but the, the reason that I said that was because, um, because I knew that the way for me to change my situation and to not be there was to accept it fully. So if I accept that I'm going to be in the same spot in five years time, then maybe it will change. What was I saying? I was saying that maybe it will change, right? So if I, if I accept, and I do this with myself, sometimes I say to myself, well, could I do this for the next 20 years? <laughs> right? And that, that's, that's extreme, you know, that's extreme hangman, right? Hanged man, you know, it's kind of like, could, could, could you just, yeah, could, could you do this for a long time? And when you find peace in it, when you find peace in that concept, it's like you don't need that training ground anymore. It's like you've learnt the lesson kind of thing. So try that out. Try this thing of being totally accepting of where you are and, and possibly the powerlessness of it, you know. And we're all put in difficult situations where we're utterly powerless. There's no, nothing we can do, right? But accept that. And funnily enough, when it's like when we stop resisting, and you know, if you're resisting, if someone's got you in a hold or something and you stop resisting, well, actually, if you stop re resisting, maybe you can, you can get out kind of thing. It's, it's that kind of thing that's, that's really going to help at this time. Group number one, I hope this has been a good reading for you. Please let me know how you get on in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I always love reading your messages. Thank you so much stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there group two. If you chose group number two then you are in the right place. Now before we draw one of these why don't we take some oracle cards. I apologize guys the light is absolutely slipping away. Oh my day has not gone how I had planned. I was supposed to do this four hours ago. And I did not do this four hours ago. <laughs> Anyone else been having a day like that where the time has just evaporated? This is a new deck. I have never used it before. I bought it from Lumiere. Lumiere is a really, she has a lovely uh, YouTube channel actually, really beautiful channel. And I like watching that sometimes. And she's made a, um, She's made a few tarot decks using the same company that I have used as well to design this. So I am going to get these 
to you guys. It's just that, yeah, I want to design a couple more. Oh, let's take it. I feel like you've had celebration before, group two. Let's take another one. Let's be extravagant. Maybe you are celebrating something. This is very exciting. All right, let's see. Now, which is your deck? This one. So yeah, I want to design a couple more and make a little shop or something, but see, what I wanted to see was the quality and like, see, I've gone for the superior smooth. This is really thick and a bit matte, but glossy. This is, but this is expensive. And whereas this stock, I'm not sure what's been chosen here. I love the quality. I think she's done an outstanding job. I love the designs. It's amazing, but it's just like, I want to get the... I want to choose all the right options kind of thing like and ultimately so that it doesn't end up being too expensive because that's the ultimate thing I don't want it to cost too much as well all right let's get into it so we've got celebration here that's very exciting we're off to a great start let's take a look at this one. Ooh, balance okay Another great card. Well, we had a kind of weighing scales thing in the previous group. That was pretty amazing. It's like a justice seven house, seventh house type thing. Okay, let's take a look. Here and now. Okay. 32. Past, future. Yeah. So guides definitely want you in the now, right? Here and now. Don't be anywhere else. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, Renaissance, fantastic. Great omen here, dragonfly. I love dragonflies. Renaissance, yeah, it's like something, something about to take off in your world, maybe. Something new, something's going to flourish. Hmm, oh, I like this. Okay. Oh, nice, sun in the ninth. Yeah, that can be... A bit challenging. Conflicts with father and or authority may change religion if afflicted. If well placed, will be dutiful, ambitious, enterprising and fortunate. Do you know, if it is well placed, yeah, this is outstanding if that's well placed. You would really carry on the flame of your father, actually. You would, it's magnificent. Like imagine if that's a Leo son there. Gosh, that's beautiful. But maybe if it's lauded by like Saturn or something, then, then you'd rebel against authority. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Let's see what else is going on here. Oh, nice. King of Pentacles. Yeah, well, we are looking at this kind of incredible masculine energy. Uh, over here, we certainly were. This is, this is, this is great masculine energy. And... So too is the King of Pentacles. Okay, let's keep going. What else do we have? Also that beautiful golden yellow there. The Hierophant. Wow, tradition. Mm. Interesting, interesting mix of things going on here, group two. Let's have a think. And this is a celebration. I kind of feel like, I feel like your angels and guides, they are celebrating you and they're celebrating the steps that you're taking to lead, to be the leader of your own life. That you're really, I feel like there's something that you're doing where you are picking up like, so I just had the phrase picking up the reins, but it's, it's kind of like, hmm, as in if you're riding a horse, you're taking the reins, you're taking charge. There's something like there's something that you're doing where you're taking charge more than you ever have before. You're kind of being the king and or the queen of your own world. You're deciding, you're calling the shots. Yeah, I, I get that feeling. You're in the here and now, and you see, so if you're not resonating with this, it, you're, you're in past or future. If you step into the now, really come into the now moment, 
you're going to find a lot of power and it's a lot of creator power. It's a lot of power that will have you be seen. This renaissance thing, and especially if you're an artist, we've got a lot of artists that come and watch these pick cards and it's kind of like, it's like your angels or guides are saying to you, be in the now. Forget about the past or the future. Forget about the outside world. None of that matters. What really matters is you picking up your power, you taking charge of your life. And in a balanced way, not in a kind of like, um, and look at that, we don't have like the King of Wands here or something like that, right? We've got the King of Pentacles here. He's slow and steady wins the race. He's not in a rush. And there is something about tradition here. There is something about you following a path of tradition. Perhaps that this is something about you um, working with your father or honoring your father in your work or through your work or as part of your work. Do you know on my website, uh, on the about page, I do have written there about how I, yeah, I'm kind of, I, I feel like I'm, well, I'm trying to or hoping to sort of follow in my dad's footsteps. He, he used to draw these charts. Can you imagine it? But I didn't even know. How weird is that? And that's the, that's the wisdom of my guides that kept me away from Vedic astrology. Actually, they kept me away until I was 36. And they, they made sure that I had, you know, so I had my Jupiter Mahadasha to learn all the spiritual stuff. Only when my Saturn matured was I able to even come into this world. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I was kind of kept away. Balance. Let's have a look at balance. Let's see what's in here as well. Balance. It's kind of, it is, it's about, this is, this is slow and steady. This is, this is not, there's no rush energy here. This is going to take time. This is a really great father energy. This is like, and no matter what your relationship was with your father, good or bad, doesn't matter. There'll, there'll be something of his that you can carry forward. There'll be something of his that inspired you or there'll be something of him that that is going to be a, an important part of your future or, or it's going to help inspire you. Something in your past, something tradition, some traditional thing. And with me, yeah, it was Vedic astrology. My dad's dad also, he did... He drew charts, you know, and I knew that when I was growing up. I knew that grandfather drew charts. That was kind of, yeah, we all spoke about that. But yeah, I didn't, amazingly, I didn't know that my dad did. Isn't that amazing? But that was by design. My guides kept it that way. Yeah, there's a whole big story around that. All right, let's take a look at this. By Lester Levinson, action does not cause bondage, but the sense of doership does. Wow, this is powerful. And this is powerful coming in here for this reading because this is about you being an artist. This is about you expressing yourself, being a leader, making your way, doing your path, and, and possibly incorporating some of the past into your artwork and, and what it is that you want to express. And this is asking you to do so in such a way that there is no ego, okay? Because the sense of doership is ego. So when we, yeah, are like egotistical about our work, that's terrible actually, because, or if, if we have a sense of doership or, um, yeah, it's not, it's not a great thing because, because it can hold you back, it can, yeah. It can call the, it's the ego that causes bondage. It's the ego that cause, causes attachment. But pure action, which is just free and without, um, and I, yeah, I want to say too much feeling as well. This is something I've been looking at to not use feelings as much. Because then it's kind of like you can act more freely and with speed kind of thing. You can get more done. 
Yeah, the sense of doership causes bondage. Interesting. Let's take another one. It says here, the greater the attachment, the greater the unhappiness. Likewise, the greater the aversion, the greater the unhappiness. It's a lack of freedom to be attached to anything. You can have things and not be attached to them. Mm. Lester Levinson. And it's really interesting that we've kind of got double fire here because we've got fire, right? It's the sun in a firehouse. Okay, so we've got you, you're seriously burning something up as well. And I think there's it, it, something that your attachment is being burnt up. And this is going to be cause for celebration. Why? Because you're going to be free. You're going to be so free. You're going to be so empowered. You're, you are going to be this authoritative son in the ninth house. You're going to be a leader and you're going to be free. This is where you're heading. There's a full moon there as well. Full moon, accomplishment. Everything is revealed. You can see it all. This is you. Wow. Powerful stuff, group two. And there is, it's kind of like, oh, wow, you've got another big one, another giant quote. <laughs> um, you've got two really big quotes. What was I going to say? I'm also not feeling inspired to draw any extra cards. So that is actually a really good sign because... You are, you're, you're doing great. I do feel it. There could, there could be some stuff in here possibly uh, with connecting in with Father, but it's, 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 it's good. And if there's anything you need to resolve, it could just be about reducing attachment at this time. That's all. That's the minor adjustment that's needed. Let's have a look and see. What we've got here, have an attitude of harmlessness toward all beings and do not want them to behave as you would like. The same thing said positively would be, have an attitude of love toward all beings and allow them to be the way they are. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like you do this. I feel like you know this. You definitely internalize this. You, this is your wisdom coming through. And I think you're going to be a role model of this. It's that whole, you know, you are free to be you and you, you allow the other freedom to be themselves, whatever it is they want to be. And that's leadership. That's a great quality of leadership. Group two, I hope this has been a good reading for you. Let me know in the comments below how you got on. I would love to hear from you. I always love reading your comments. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, you are in the right place. Before I draw a card from here, I'm going to draw some oracle cards. I apologize for the lack of light. I'm so annoyed with my day today. <laughs> I was supposed to do this. I was telling group two, I was like, I was supposed to do this four hours ago. Next time I'm going to make sure that I organize the day far better. And because I was kind of told that this room would be free for me around midday. I will arrange with those people <laughs> that this room needs to be free. <laughs> Oh, I'm all right. I just like I feel like this will require some serious color editing when it comes time to doing that. Doesn't matter because we have had sun today. That, that's the thing. It's not like this was a gray day. No, this has been a beautiful day. It's been freezing though. It's been like gosh, ten degrees or something. I don't know. It feels like ten. Maybe it, I think the thing said sixteen, but it's more like ten. <laughs> All right, let's put that there. That one wants to be there. And then this one, I'm going to take one of these. I hope you're doing well, having a nice week wherever you are. Okay. What's going on? Oh, let's take some of these. We'll leave room in case you need some clarifiers. I didn't need any clarifiers for group two. 
their energy was pretty clear today okay let's let's just go with this I'll put that there right oh oh how nice mending yeah I've never drawn this card I didn't I've never drawn the group one card and I've never drawn this one that's really sweet oh. okay mending good good start Ooh, divine yeah nice full moon the fullness of something I don't know if you can hear those birds in the background interesting Oh, Saturn in the first house, challenged by authority, health issues, matures fast, is very disciplined, excels as a judge or lawyer, has a loyal spouse. Or do you know what? Will be a loyal spouse as well, right? So you'll be a loyal spouse. You'll probably attract a loyal spouse as well. Very good. Look, I love Saturn having any connection with the seventh house. I do think it produces good marriage partners and it, and it produces like kind of, I don't know, a rock solid sort of you're really there for each other kind of thing yeah truth and integrity yeah it produces truth and integrity <laughs> correct oh saturn's all about the truth yes yep you do not want to lie if you've got a lot of saturn in your chart it will not go well oh how nice the ace of cups wow that's beautiful great card new beginning in love Ah, and the Three of Cups. Okay, well, I mean, look, this can be a card of celebration. Yeah, this can be a card of celebration. Good times, being social, enjoying yourself. This came up in Group 1, and it's interesting there. I kind of got a bit of a vibe of... I don't know, this, it felt like there was something not clear in that person's energy where it, it, it kind of felt like three people or maybe, you know, if they had some, if they were pursuing somebody, they, they are pursuing more than one person at a time type thing. But I'm not getting that feeling here with you at all, group number three. I'm getting a feeling of a very clear heart. I mean, look, well, you've you got Saturn energy here. You can't afford to be that kind of person. Um, let's take a look and see what's in here. Let's, let's draw another card. Let's just get one more, see, see what comes. What else do we need to know for group three? Mm, okay. Seven of Wands. You had this last week, group three. I'm pretty sure you did. So perhaps people are coming at you, people are, maybe you're not getting rest, fending off too many requests or something for your time. Let's have a look. Maybe you're not getting enough rest because that, that is a pretty intense situation there. I mean, you, you're backed into a corner and everyone's coming at you, <laughs> right? That is interesting. Okay, let's 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 might be unrelated. Let's see, what's this seven of wands about? Mm. Oh, Ace of Pentacles. All right, I do think this is about your work situation. Maybe you feel like maybe you feel like they're. Yeah, I think there have been a lot of people on your case. You're on your way to creating your wealth and abundance, though, and it's going to be amazing. So you keep going, group number three. You're up for good times and love and beauty and all kinds of incredible things. This is a great spread. There's something that you need to mend. All right, what are you mending? But we just put these here. What are you mending, group three? What's, what, what needs mending in your world? this one the moon something in your subconscious mind all right 
something in your subconscious is some deep hidden something within your subconscious mind needs mending it's interesting we've got a full moon. wow we've got two full moons all right so what is this about let's follow this track here we'll see if we can understand that a bit better interesting we got more dark blue there mm, no make it obvious give me one card what's this about mending moon and divine Well, we're running out of light here too. Ooh, all right. Well, should we take them? Go on, let's be greedy. That's a stack. Whoa, should we do it? You know, we've got time. We're at seven minute mark. We're okay. Let's go crazy. <laughs> I'll just lay them all out. It might be a mess. Let's do it. Two of swords. Okay, so you've been going through some confusion. Correct, right? Yep. Who isn't confused these days? Everybody is. <laughs> Okay, so there's been confusion in your world. Six of Cups, nostalgia, somebody returning from the past. Right, you're possibly confused about that. We've got a phone ringing in the background. Don't know if you can hear that. People want you, Group 3. People, you're in demand, okay? Someone coming back from the past. Two of Pentacles, you're juggling a lot. A lot going on in your world right now. You're busy. Knight of Pentacles... I think you're quite work focused, aren't you? So you're definitely work focused, but the Knight of Cups, there's some romantic thing that wants to come into your world and it's probably very nice and very lovely and very wonderful. But you're possibly afraid. We've got the moon there, you see. Ah, and the two of wands, you're looking ahead. He came in first, didn't he? And that came in under this Six of Cups. Somebody from the past maybe wants to come back. Which I feel like you would be open to if that were to happen. And we've got Two of Wands. Well, you're looking ahead and you're planning the future. And you're thinking, you're contemplating. This is nice energy, Group 3. I'm liking the look of all of this for you. Let's take a look and see what's in the jar, shall we? I think we've got three left. Let's take them all. Like if something comes back in, mend it, heal it, work with it. That's what I would say. Yeah? something worth worth salvaging these might be askew I'll just deal with it <laughs> right complexity is the lack of understanding tension is caused by wanting to go in two opposite ways at the same time yeah this is true do you know what Group number three, this is actually, um, what is this? This is a, a verbal representation of the chariot card. It's really interesting that the chariot did not turn up for you here, but this is like getting the chariot and there is movement in your world. Possibly this movement has come after a very, very long time. And I think what you want and what you're craving is simplicity. Complexity is the lack of understanding. Yeah, I do agree with that. Oh, what's his name, that guy? I'm going to feature him in the Masters series. Oh, I always... Feynman. Is it Richard Feynman? He's a physics guy. Anyway, he says that if you can explain it to a five-year-old, then you know your subject. And I agree with that. I think complexity is... Uh, yeah, it's not a good thing. But it's a beautiful thing as well. The complexity is not bad either. I mean, there's, you know, yeah. See, I've been working on a Masters episode, um, Andy Warhol, and I'm going to put Andy in the jar next week. So you'll see, I have some interesting thoughts there from stuff I've learned from him. But yeah, he wasn't into complexity, I don't think. All right, let's have a look here. This is also Lester. I didn't quote him at the bottom, but 
There's no happiness in people or things. Happiness is our basic nature. Happiness is our very own beingness. And when we are only being, we are infinitely happy. Yeah, wonderful. It's really beautiful. I agree. Happiness is what we are. And that's, I think, the mending uh, thing that, that is here, you know. You're happy, there's happiness, there's happen happiness in the other being, there's happiness everywhere, really. That's what the, like, the whole world is made of that. A anything else is illusion, you know, and, and complexity and all that kind of thing. Right, uh, let's, what have we got here? It's so much faster for your growth to know that only you can do it for you. Yes, that is so true. And that, that this is an important thing on your healing journey to know and to make sure that any healing you do, and look, this could be, guys, this doesn't have to be mending with somebody else. This could be mending your own heart, you know, and, and why, why do it? Do you mend your heart because you want to get something or because you want to go somewhere or because you want to be with someone? No, you, you mend your heart. You do that work for you. You do it for you. You do it for the gift and the privilege of this life, of being here, you know? It's like... And like, because you are a gift that you give back to the all is one. And you do it for that reason as well. You do it out of love for the all. It's so much faster for your growth to know that only you can do it for you. Yeah. You can. And that's, that's the best you can do. You heal for yourself. You don't heal for anyone else. And all this work that you're doing, well... That's another thing Lester talks about. He's like, because anything we do in the world, we do that because we want to be happy, right? But start with the premise that you are happy and share that and more comes back. That's abundance, you know? That's, well, I'm happy. I'm going to share that. And yeah, more comes back in. You're not going to the outside world to get anything. That's not it. That's, that's not the right way of living kind of thing. That's living the wrong way around. It's like you've got to live from inside out. What are you giving out kind of thing? Focus on that. Keep your focus there. Keep your focus on what you have to give, you know. Group number three. This has been a beautiful reading. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.